Hey everybody, this is uh, Jim at SP500Chart.com using time-honored techniques to understand modern markets, featuring daily technical analysis videos of the S&P 500 index. Uh, this is the second of, uh, in a series. I'm not quite sure exactly how long the series is going to last, but uh, there's a pretty good bit of stuff that I think we can cover some basics. And um, today is lesson two, and it's going to be basically trend lines. Very, very basic stuff, but still things that, that uh, you, you need to know. Uh, just to remind you that uh, the website and this video are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research and make investment decisions that are suitable for your financial uh, situation. I'm not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. So let's look at uh, trend lines. And we are looking at one of my uh, favorites from the past, uh, PZG, Paramount Gold and Mining Corporation. And, uh, you know, if PZG does does something here soon, I may have to uh, load back up on it. But but let's, uh, let's talk about trend lines just for a little bit. To begin with, from lesson one, uh, I hope the, the takeaway there was that a logarithmic chart is going to be a more reliable uh, chart for uh, finding your trend lines. Uh, again, this is based upon the premise that uh, people do not trade stocks and say, you know, I'm going to buy uh, uh, XYZ Corporation stock and sell it when it goes up a dollar. You can't make that kind of statement uh, because if XYZ Corporation is selling currently for 15 cents a share and it goes up a dollar, you know, you better sell it when it hits 30 cents. Uh, it may go up a dollar, but uh, you, you hear what I'm saying? A dollar gain on a 15 cent stock is, uh, is, is more than a home run. Uh, whereas a dollar uh, in Amazon is nothing. A dollar in Apple is nothing. So you, people don't say, as a general rule, a dollar is when I'm going to take profits. What they generally do is they think, you know, as soon as I get X percent, then I'm looking at profits. And really, that's what profit is. I mean, profit is, is, not, a, in, in, uh, is not really uh, best defined in terms of dollars when you're looking at a share price. It is better uh, defined as a percent gain. So that's, uh, that's the reason I use a logarithmic chart. It shows percent gain much better. Um, so let's look at, uh, at uh, Paramount and see uh, what we can do to start to understand trend lines. To begin with, trend lines are, not surprisingly, they're lines. And they are drawn across various features that you would see in a stock chart. And the important thing to understand here is that trend lines, you, you, you've got to learn to, uh, to pick your meaningful uh, peaks and valleys before you, start can, before you can draw good trend lines. For example, if I go back here and say, well, look, there's a little dip right here back. Uh, let me highlight that. You know, we had this little dip right there. I think I'm going to draw a trend line there. Well, you can't because that's that's just in the middle of this big move from uh, about two bucks down to uh, twenty. What was it? Twenty-two cents. So that's not a good place to draw a trend line. I'll tell you a good place you could you could draw a trend line uh, if you're looking uh, for a low is go down here to this twenty-two cents. So let's do that. Let's start. And just I'm going to use a tool to put a point there. Then, oops, sorry, messed that. Should have held the mouse down. Uh, put the point there. Then we can extend a line. And you can see, wow, if we move that up here, we can see how for a, a good while, um, PZG was kind of obeying this trend line for at least. Oh, what? About seven months, seven and a half months. And uh, that was a steep pitch. You can't expect that to be kept up. Another interesting thing about trend lines is a lot of times you'll notice 
that um, they create channels. And here you can see that PZG pretty faithfully stayed in that channel for um, more than half a year. Um, so this this would be what I would call a uh, a rising channel, and it is made up of two trend lines. The bottom line would be called the support line, and the top line would be called the resistance line. Now some people use the term resistance to apply to both lines. Okay, they'll say, well, we're getting resistance. In other words, the market is resisting prices going any lower than this line. But I, I, I think you need, you, you should use the term support. And here's why. If you're in a conversation with somebody and you're talking about a stock share and you say that, uh, you know, I think uh, Alcoa has resistance at, well, that person might think, that you're saying that you feel that uh, that the stock is getting ready to sell off at resistance when what you meant to say was it has support so if you use the term resistance and support interchangeably by using resistance for both cases you may be uh, saying something to some people that you don't mean to say so the top line is resistance that's where the market turns the uh, of the uh, price back and the lower line is support that's where the market supports the price and where buyers come back in okay so we had this little channel here there's another thing that's kind of interesting with PZG and this is why I chose it there was a horizontal line right here that really uh, uh, acted on one two three four five and if we give it a little bit of a little bit of downward bias there, we could even say six and seven attempts um, to get over that line. Now, this is the interesting thing: is uh, on the website uh, I had made mention of PZG, uh, and and I uh, alerted the viewers. And I don't I, I do this when it's when I think it's a really clear, pretty clear cut case. Um, I said, you know, you might want to look at PZG. If it can get over that uh, $2 area, over that, over, really over about $1.90 and get into the low twos, I think this thing could, uh, could double. And uh, sure enough, with, uh, probably within just a matter of days, that happened. And uh, there were some reasons to think that. The, the main reason was, was that there was a pattern involved in this chart that... Uh, that said that we're we're looking at getting up to about 390 or so as a minimum target. Eventually, I believe PZG, if we come back to it later, is going to be up um, uh, over 10. But it's going to take a while. If this chart plays out, it should do that. Um, so anyway, there you go. That is uh, just a very brief lesson in trend lines. You want to find major points of uh, lows and major points that are highs. Uh, again, you, you don't want to say, well, let's take this uh, high right here and draw it across this low right there. And even though that matches up with, uh, with where it bounced right here, that, that line really doesn't make sense because you're, you're picking a, a, a high point in a channel that was going down and then you're picking just kind of an arbitrary low point in the middle of what ended up being a consolidation so uh, there there you have it trend lines use log charts find major tops major bottoms avoid if you can finding uh, looking for little points that just support your thesis because there happens to be a point somewhere uh, in between a major top or a major bottom I think that can be uh, that can be dangerous. So uh, and I tell you what, let's look at one more real quick. Okay, we're looking at the Nautilus Group. These are the 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 folks who make uh, bow flexes and uh, and uh, Nautilus uh, uh, workout gear weight machines. I guess they still make their machines. Uh, <laughs> I have to confess, uh, I haven't been any place where I would see one. Uh, in, in quite a while, so uh, I probably need to. But uh, again, I've already drawn some trend lines here, and I was really hopeful that Nautilus could get over this purple line right here, because if it could have done that, uh, this looked like it was setting up to make a nice move uh, up up 
to 10 or higher. But you know something? Look, here's this line. One major, uh, fairly major uh, occurrence right here after this run up from uh, 290 to uh, 6 bucks, And then it sells down heavily, comes back uh, to, at that point, what was an arbitrary point. Okay? Uh, you let's, let's talk about the number of lines. Let's, let's erase this line just for a bit. And let's say we are looking at Nautilus for the first time, and, and we are looking at this chart on the day that it hits 430. Okay? There is no justification at this point, if we are looking at it on this day right here when it got, in, got into the low fours, there is no justification at this point to say that's a top because we don't know that it's going to continue up or whether it's going to turn back down. We just don't know at that point in time. So you have to assume that, uh, that this is, this is you, you, you just can't make, make a call that this is a top here. So when you're looking at something and you're looking at a current price and you're, and you're tempted to say that's a bottom or a top, you can't do that because the, the, the correct answer is not enough information. Now, you could see that there was a top here and a series of tops here and, and a, uh, a, uh, another point of resistance here, okay? Once that broke out and started to go back, I'm going to start to spill the beans here, but when you have a broken trend line, it is very common for there to be a pullback to uh, that trend line at some point in the future. So if we, if we uh, skip ahead a little bit, what do we have? Well, we actually have a pullback to that line twice. Then it looked like uh, Nautilus was uh, firming back up. And if you, had if you had bought on this first one and you were a little patient here, you would have made, you would have made good coin on Nautilus. Uh, if you had waited for this second one, then you would have made a little bit more, but, and you would have gotten it a little sooner. But uh, to make a long story short, um, that pullback to that broken trend line, this resistance line, it's very common for resistance once broken to turn into support. We'll go into why that is a little bit later. And you can see that, uh, that Nautilus continued. And eventually we could draw this line right here from this bottom to where it bounced uh, for the second time on this descending trend line and it ran from what about a buck thirty up to a nice uh, nice uh, mid threes but then it started to sell back down where's it gonna bounce next time well um, I've got this line drawn right here tentatively uh, and, and I think this line could provide support um, you can see that once this line broke, what happened? Well, came up for a test, got over it momentarily, but then that test failed. And in uh, that trend line that was support here and here, once broken, is now resistance. So these lines tend to flip-flop back and forth. Again, we'll get into, into a little bit more about the psychology of that in another, uh, in another video. So that's kind of it for now. Just make sure you're choosing uh, major areas of lows and highs before you, uh, before you uh, start drawing a trend line. And uh, that line actually was on my chart uh, before I... Uh, remember, that was our neckline where I said if it got up over that, then I would look for it to pierce over that, come back, and then make a nice run. But that didn't happen. Could happen. But uh, it didn't happen when I was hoping it would back here uh, in, in the spring of 2011. So look, that's, that's today's, uh, well, I want to say, not say today's lesson. That implies there'll be one tomorrow. There probably won't be. But there'll be one or two a week until I run out of good ideas. Uh, so look, if you uh, enjoyed this video and you want to see uh, a little bit more in a uh, more practical setting, um, I've got a very affordable service. It is a daily update of the S&P 500. And when I say daily, there's a little asterisk by it. And if you look closely, it says the goal is, is 19 days out of every 20. There's going to be some time when something keeps me from doing one of these. So I don't want to make any, 
and he promised with 100% regularity you will get a video every day. But if you subscribe, the way it works is this. Subscribers will get Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday videos after the close. Those who do not subscribe, you'll, you can still see the videos, but you're going to see them on a delayed basis. Everybody uh, gets a weekend uh, weekly update that is a review of the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday videos in general. And uh, how much does this cost? Well, is it $79 a month? No. Is it $119 a month? No. It is $19.95 per month. Uh, if you want to sign up for a year, you can do that too uh, for roughly a 20% uh, discount. Look, the, the response has been very strong, and uh, I hope that, uh, that you got something out of this, uh, this lesson, and I hope you'll consider visiting the website and checking out and, and seeing how these, uh, how these methods work um, with, uh, with the S&P and other indexes. So uh, take care. Thanks for watching.